All right, everybody. Good afternoon and happy Friday. Find a comfortable seat, please, to start. <sighs> so there's a verse in the Yoga Sutra in chapter one, verse number 12, and it's translated by BKS Iyengar, one of the fathers of that style of, style of yoga, to say that practice and detachment are the means to still the movements of consciousness. So you might remember that the Yoga Sutras defines yoga as the calming of the fluctuations or disturbances of the mind. So there's two main ingredients, abhyasa, which means focused effort, and vairagya, Sanskrit for detachment from outcome, are what can make our yoga practice effective and balanced. So that may sound like two polarities, right? This doing and this letting go. But it's finding our place in that yin yang that in the present moment, we find that union. So let's look at the breakdown of the word hatha. Hatha yoga is the style of yoga that involves physical postures, like what we're practicing here today. Ha means sun, and the sun is associated with heat, obviously, and active energy. And then tha, T-H-A, means moon, and that is associated with a calmer, cooling energy, and even stillness and inward reflection. So as we pair the two, it is that balance of abhyasa and vairagya. So things to think about, perhaps, as you're practicing yoga. What do you tend to lean towards on that scale from focused effort and heat building like tapas in the eight limbs of yoga or that other side of letting go and just letting loose non-attachment? Do you tend to veer towards one end or the other? And if so, how does that quality of practice come out in the end? Like, how do you feel at the end of your yoga practice from doing so? Now, some of us might tend to be more um, heat builders, you know, achievers and wanting to push our edge physically. And some of us might be more about pampering in yoga and really just ah, let everything feel perhaps easy. So how do we find that balance? And then finally, are there areas of your practice that could benefit from more or less of each of those ingredients, the effort and the detachment? I'll end with a quote from an article in Yoga Northwest by Injila. The beauty of yoga is learning to fly and soar through our life with the wings of abhyasa and vairagya and open our heart to the wonders and awe in our everyday experiences and embrace life fully whatever happens with entheos which is greek for enthusiasm so we'll culminate our physical practice with our 10-minute guided meditation on awareness of effort and letting go. So as you're sitting here now, become more grounded by pressing towards the earth on what you're sitting on through both sides of your pelvis, left and right. And you might even allow your eyes to close as you imagine restacking each vertebra of your spine, starting from the tailbone. Beginning to deepen your breath as you lift up through the mid spine, through your cervical spine at your neck, where your chin parallels the earth, lifting up through the top of your head. And then feel the lightness of relaxing your shoulders, perhaps slightly behind you, so the chest is broad, and then down your back, relaxing your arms on your lap. Tuning into deeper breaths.
breathing in from the base of your spine up through each vertebra, up through the crown of your head. Breathing out a slow whisper to your mouth. Feel the energizing inhalations. Balance with the releasing, calming exhalations. So now we're going to prepare to practice a Kriya in Kundalini Yoga called Ego Eradicator. And it's just a means to help calm the fluctuations of the mind, get into a breath rhythm as we build some internal heat, particularly at the solar plexus. So breath of fire, which involves, is breathing into your stomach with your mouth closed. Short, quick breaths and the exhales pulse your belly towards your spine like a drum. It sounds like you're blowing your nose quickly, like this. You wanna keep your shoulders relaxed and your face relaxed, so cool up here in the head and shoulders, but warm down here in the belly. And then for the actual Kriya, we raise the arms at diagonals of about 60 degrees, and then you stick out up your thumbs while the rest of your fingers curl inward so that you feel an active stretch between your thumbs and index fingers. And then the eyes are closed. You're directing your gaze at your third eye center between the eyebrows and up onto your forehead. And if you want to practice before we time it, it's like this. So I'm going to set the timer for one minute. Do what you can and try to develop a rhythm you can sustain Again, just breathing through the nose. Ready? Begin. Take a deep breath in, hold the breath, lift your pelvic floor, engaging your lower belly in and up, engaging Mula Bandha. And as you exhale slowly, bring your thumbs to touch overhead with your eyes closed if you can. And then release the palms face down out to your sides and back onto your lap. And just pause here to observe the effects of that breath work. Perhaps you have an intention you'd like to set for your practice. And now let's continue to cultivate warmth in our bodies using Ujjayi Pranayama, victorious breath. So keeping your lips closed, now sustain your breath equally in and out to your nose while gently narrowing the back of your throat so that you create a soft whisper. using that sound to track the quality of your breath and to give your mind something to help it focus in the present moment. You can gently open your eyes if they're closed and let's come down onto all fours, your hands and your knees. Setting your wrists directly under your shoulders and your knees right under your hips. We're gonna do what I like to call wrist push-ups. They're a great way to warm up the muscles that support the wrist. So here, you'll keep the base of each finger and all of your fingers, including your thumbs, flat on the ground, and you'll only raise the heels of your palms 
Inhaling as you lift them simultaneously. Important to keep the thumb and pinky fingers flat on the floor. And then exhale, lowering both heels of your palms simultaneously, slowly. Try that a few times. Notice that the spine stays long, so you're gazing on the floor ahead of your hands, not collapsing the head. Shoulders stay relaxed, away from the neck. Let's try about five more cycles of breath of these wrist push-ups. Nice strength building for your wrists. You should begin to feel some warmth at your forearms. Notice if there's any clenching in the jaw or in the face. Good ways to practice balancing efforts with that letting go. So finish this last round and then lean back onto your legs. We'll prepare to give the wrist a stretch. So making fists out of your hands, gently press your fists into each other. Then lean the backs of your fists onto your mat, bending your elbows apart off the mat Begin to shift your weight forward slowly so that you can decide where to stop, placing just the right amount of pressure, stretching into your outer wrists and forearms. Now while here, breathing consciously, you might give your head some gentle movements, making sure your neck and your face are at ease. Now, setting your hands flat on the ground again, place your wrists about two inches ahead of your shoulders this time. Point your index fingers forward, parallel to each other, thumbs wide and flat, and inhale into cow pose. Gliding forward, coil your chest up. Exhale into cat pose, contract your belly, dropping your head, tuck your tailbone to dome your back. Take about four more slow cycles of breath, Fine tuning, synchronizing the entire length of the inhalation with cow pose and the entire length of the exhalation going into cat pose. And when you finish your fourth round of breath, tuck your toes behind you with knees very bent. Lift your pelvis as high as you can towards your rear wall in downward facing dog. Now you might choose to spend the first few breaths shifting around organically, just welcoming your body into this position. Pedaling the feet can help warm up the backs of your legs. Cultivating this Connection between your mind, body, and breath. Now you might have your knees bent, especially a lot in the beginning. Lifting your sitting bones high. Press the ground away with your hands and also lift the shoulders back away from your neck, completely dropping your skull. Spin the outsides of your upper arms or triceps towards the floor, broadening across your shoulders. Firm your belly towards your back and press the front creases of your hips further back. See that your feet are parallel, about hips width apart. And now let's be still, just observing the breath here for three more cycles. As you firm down through your hands, inhale, raise your right leg behind you. Exhaling, bend your right knee and turn open at your hip. Taking a few more breaths to perhaps rotate your right leg, like you're drawing circles in the air with your knee, both directions. Then on your next in breath, re-square your hips to balance and straighten the right leg behind you. As you exhale, softly land your right foot just outside of your right hand, coming into a lizard lunge. Now you can decide if you wanna lower your back knee here. We're gonna add some movement in a moment. 
and or if you have blocks to place underneath your hands that platform can help if you're tensing in the shoulders here so you want to feel open in the chest slightly lifted at your heart relaxing the neck now whether your back knee is on the ground or on the floor take a deep in breath and extend your sternum the center of your chest forward gently scissoring your right outer hip back now as you exhale begin to curl your right toes up and plug your right thigh bone deeper back into the hip socket towards straightening the right leg as you lengthen your spine forward and fold inside of your leg inhale rebend your right knee to stack just over your heel gazing forward relax the shoulders again exhale scissor your right outer hip back flexing your right foot as you elongate your spine to fold let's take three more cycles of breath like that inhale into lizard lunge exhale straightening your right leg bow inside inhale lunge exhale straighten and bow inhale lunge exhale straighten and bow now return to your lunge and we'll begin to rotate your left leg to turn out from the hips and so make sure your left knee your left middle toes follow in the same direction walk your hands towards the left side of your mat we're coming into a half squat you might have blocks under your hands if you want to be higher up so make sure that your both of your thighs are turned out at your hips your tailbone is descending as your chest is lifting slightly forward and you're flexing your left foot helping you to balance here as we open up into both inner thighs about three more breaths in this posture called skindasana Deep inhale and as you exhale rotate your entire left leg from the hip inward to return to your lunge planting your hands step into plank pose whether your knees are on the ground or your legs are straight we're pausing for three breaths so either form a plank raise your right leg off the floor trying to keep your two hips balanced flex your right toes Press back to your right heel, lifting your lower belly. Now, as we lower through Chaturanga, if you feel ready for a little more rigor here, you could keep your right foot lifted as we come down. So exhale, shift forward, bend your elbows back to hug your side ribs and slowly lower all the way down. With all 10 toenails pressing the earth, feel your wrists alongside your floating ribs, bend your elbows close to your sides. Keeping your feet and pelvis heavy on the floor, breathe in to float your chest forward in cobra, softening your shoulders down. As you exhale, press up through your version of plank and lifting your hips, return a downward facing dog. We'll just pause here for a couple of breaths. Notice any difference you might feel in the left and right sides of your body. Now on your inhale, raise your left leg behind you. As you exhale, bend your left knee and turn open at your hip. Now you might decide to circle your left leg gently in both directions as we're previewing this hip opener. Relaxing your head down. Then turn the left outer hip down, rebalance your hips as you inhale, straighten your left leg back slowly with control exhale lightly land your left foot just outside of your left hand now remember you could grab your ankle and bring it forward if it didn't come forward enough now in lizard lunge on this side decide if you want to lower your right knee keep it lifted or maybe place your hands on top of blocks so that you nurture relaxation in your neck and shoulders in lizard lunge take a deep in breath extending your sternum forward gently outer hip back now as you exhale flex your left toes up off the floor and plug your left thigh bone back deeper into the hip socket while extending your chest further forward to fold 
continuing to the flow of your breath. Inhale, re-bend your left knee, right on top of the heel. Knees forward, lizard lunge. Exhale, scissor your left after hip back, flexing the foot as you grow your spine forward to fold. Inside of your love. Three more rounds. Inhale, bend, lunge. Exhale, scissor, and bow. Inhale, bend, lunge. Exhale, scissor, and bow. Feeling the rhythm, inhale, bend, lunge. Exhale, scissor, and bow. Now return to the lunge. Begin to rotate your entire right leg from the hip externally, so that's turning it out, so that your right knee and middle toe are always pointing in the same direction as you're turning it out. Walk your hands towards the right edge of your mat and you're in skindasana, half squat. Remember that you could place your hands on some kind of platform if you don't feel ready to go as deep. So as both legs turn out, flex your right toes up off the floor and soften your body through your breath. Notice if there's any clenching in the face or other areas of the body where it's not needed. Finding the balance here of the effort in your practice and with a sense of surrender and ease. One more deep breath. Now from your right hip socket, rotate your entire leg, even your foot inward to return to your lunge. Planting your hands at the top of your mat, make your way into your version of plank to hold for about three breaths. Whether knees are on the ground or legs are straight, lift your left leg off the floor and try to balance the height of your two hips, gaze forward. Flexing your left foot, firm your belly towards your spine. And you might keep your left leg lifted for added rigor as you lower on an exhale forward through Chaturanga. Now you might come into upward dog where you lower just halfway and flip the tops of your feet to the ground or come all the way down and inhale into Cobra. As you exhale, engage your belly, lifting your hips, draw your weight towards the rear of your mat, downward facing down. Let's take a few breaths. Observe any shift or difference. Now, as you bend your knees a lot, lift your heels and hips high, look in front of your hands. Remember that idea of engaging Mula Bandha? It's lifting your pelvic floor, contracting your lower belly inward and up towards the heart while you've emptied the breath. So hold your exhale out and try that engagement as you walk or float to the top of your mat. Inhale, press the ground of your legs with your fingertips and lengthen your spine forward. Exhale, hinge from your, your hips and balance. From down through your feet, inhale, sweep your arms overhead towards the sky. On this first one, catch hold of your left wrist with your right hand and exhale, side bend to your right, firming your left foot into the ground. Inhale, rise up back to center. Catch hold of your right wrist with your left hand. Exhale, side bend to your left, firming your right foot down. Inhale, up to center. Open both arms and exhale, fold forward. Inhale, lift the chest, lengthen halfway, step to plank or float to chaturanga. Taking it all the way through your version of your vinyasa, cobra or upward facing dog. We'll meet in downward facing dog as we set the stage for our next flow. In downward facing dog, inhale. Bend your right knee, turn open at your right hip, and as you flex your right foot, cross your right ankle in front of your left thigh, like a figure four shape you could see upside down. Now let's pause here as we begin in a semi-flow. As you're flexing your right foot and pressing ankle and thigh against each other, lift your two sitting bones up and equally back as you firm your belly towards your back. Relax your neck. Feel the rebound of your weight off the floor through both hands. And take one more in-breath. Now as you exhale, look forward 
and bend your right knee to cross over to your left outer upper arm, keeping your shoulders balanced over your wrists in plank. Inhale, raise your right leg straight behind you. Exhale, open the right knee and tap your right outer upper arm coming forward to stack shoulders over wrists. Inhale, raise the right leg again. This time, round your back and exhale, bend the right knee towards your nose, softly landing the foot directly between your hands to prepare for warrior two. Spinning your back heel down, align your right heel to the arch of your left foot, then firm down through both feet and windmill your arms to rise up. In warrior two, feel the slight turning inward of your left leg as you straighten it. Contrasted by the complete turn out of your right leg as you bend your right knee just over the heel. With the bowl shape of your pelvis, neutrally upright, feel the full length of your spine as you broaden across your arms and reach through your fingertips. Relaxing your shoulders down, take one more breath. Then flipping your right palm to face up, straighten your right leg, and come into reverse triangle pose, lifting the sides of your waist, lean sideways towards your rear wall, landing your left hand gently onto your left leg and sweeping your right arm overhead, lengthening your right side body. Now feel your center contain, drawing your navel towards your back. Take another full cycle of breath. On your next inhale, lower both hands to frame your right foot, stepping into plank. Now as you exhale to lower, if you want that added rigor, keep your right foot as you come down to Chaturanga. Then both feet on the ground as you inhale to your back bend, cobra or upward facing dog. Exhale, use the engagement of your belly to lift your hips back to downward facing dog. Take a deep breath in smoothing it out to your nose. Side two, turning out your left leg from the hip, bend the left knee open, flex your left foot, and inhale, cross your left ankle in front of your right thigh. As you press against it, feel your left thigh splay open more while you actively draw your sitting bones evenly up and back. Belly firms in, neck is relaxed, Take another in-breath. As you exhale, look forward and cross your left knee to tap the outside of your right upper arm, balancing your two shoulders in plank. Inhale, re-extend your left leg behind you. As you exhale, tap left knee to left outer upper arm, stacking shoulders over wrists. Last one, inhale, extend the leg. Exhale, round your back and bend the left knee towards your nose, Gently landing the left foot between your hands for warrior two. Spinning your right heel down, align your left heel to the arch of your right foot and root into the earth, cartwheeling your arms apart. Feel the slight turn in of your right leg as you straighten it and the complete turn out of your left leg as you bend the knee just over the heel. With your pelvis sitting upright, Lengthen your spine and relax your shoulders. Feel the reach out through all of your fingertips. Take another inhalation. Then straighten your left leg for reverse triangle. Flip your left palm to face up. Lift both sides of your waist. Then laterally lean towards your rear wall. So you gently land your right hand on your right leg as you raise the left arm overhead. Feel that opening into your left side body. Let's take one full cycle of breath. With your center contained, inhale, lower both hands to frame your left foot, coming into your plank pose. Maybe you keep the left foot lifted and flex as you lower through Chaturanga, you choose. Breathe in to lift your heart. Breathe out, contract your belly to help lift your hips. Now in Downward Dog, let's take three to five breaths, listening to a steady rhythm in your breath. But now we'll practice pacing our movements with continuously. We'll finish this round, adding a beginning and end to our sequence. 
Bend your knees. We'll pass your hands on empty breath. Engage Mula Bandha. Lightly land at the top. Inhale, lengthen halfway. Exhale, forward fold. Repeat parallel hips distance. Inhale, bend your knees. Come into a modified chair. Lean back towards your heels with your arms up. Then press your feet into the floor and exhale, rise up to mountain. Now bring your feet to touch for full chair, beginning our sequence flow. Inhale, bend your knees, full chair pose, Utkatasana. Exhale, bow forward, Uttanasana. Inhale, rise halfway, Ardha Uttanasana. Plant your hands, step back or float into Chaturanga, Dandasana. Keep going at your pace of breath through your vinyasa. Meeting in downward facing dog. As you sustain your breath, do so with your body. Inhale, raise your right knee open, cross the ankle in front of your left thigh, figure four. Exhale, cross the right knee to your left tricep, balancing your shoulders over your wrists. Inhale, raise your right leg, three-legged dog. Exhale, tap the knee to your right tricep, forward and front. Inhale, raise your right leg. Feel the power and grace of your breath, bend knee to nose. Land your foot directly between your hands for warrior two. Inhale, cartwheel your arms into warrior two. Straighten your right leg, flip the right palm. Exhale, reverse triangle pose. Inhale, cartwheel your hands to the earth into your version of plank. Now decide where you're gonna go here to flow, pretty not flow. If you need to conserve energy, you always have a choice. Steadying your breath, back to downward dog, side two. Inhale, figure four, left ankle over right thigh, flex the left foot. Exhale, cross, left knee to right tricep, balance shoulders over wrists. Inhale, raise the left leg, three-legged dog. Exhale, tap, left tricep, forward and plank. Inhale, raise your left leg. Exhale, round forward, knee to nose, set the foot between your hands. Inhale, cartwheel your arms to warrior two. Exhale, straighten the left leg, flip the left palm, reverse triangle. Inhale, lower your hands to the earth and plank. Exhale, take it down to flow in your own way, remembering you could skip it if you need. When you arrive in downward facing dog, let your body be still. Steady your eyes to focus on one spot and pay attention to subtlety. Bend your knees, look forward. On emptied breath, engage Mula Bandha and lightly land at the top. Inhale, lengthen halfway up. Exhale, fold in. Bend your knees together. Inhale, full chair, Utkatasana. Exhale, rise up. So from here, feet touching to begin. Let's prepare for hand to big toe pose. So if you have a strap, that can be helpful if you're feeling any tightness in your hamstrings. You could step the ball of your left foot as you flex the foot. So there's a top grip on that. If you don't have a strap, you can keep your left knee bent. There are other ways to modify it as well. So place your right hand on your right hip, left foot in that strap, or bend your left knee and catch the outside of it with your left hand to start. Now be aware of balancing your left and right hips, like two ends of a scale. If you're going to straighten the left leg to some degree and you don't have a strap, bring your left arm inside of the leg, catch hold of your ankle, or clasp your big toe with your index and middle fingers. Keep flexing your left foot, and to whatever degree you can, straighten the left leg forward and plug your left shoulder back and down. Begin to turn out your left leg from the hip before opening it slowly. Then open your right arm to counterbalance, only opening your leg and straightening it to the degree that you could keep your spine vertically upright. If you feel like you're starting to tilt, 
over, you can just retract a little bit. Now let's take three more breaths. Steady your gaze on one spot. Breathe in, feel the earth below, press into that support. Exhale, three. Inhale, feel the strength at your center. Exhale, two. Inhale, feel some kind of lightness, perhaps at your chest. Bring your left leg forward, flex the foot, raise your arms for one inhalation. Think of lifting your pelvic floor, stand a little taller, and then softly land the left foot down. Shake it out, dance it out, or just take a big sigh, letting that go. So remember, vairagya is a Sanskrit word for non-attachment to outcome. You put in the effort, and it's the process of putting the effort is what we're valuing. You're showing up. So bring your feet to touch. If you're using a strap, wrap the ball of your right foot in it and hold the strap. Left hand on left hip. If you're not using a strap, bend your right knee and catch the outside of it. Flex your right foot as soon as it leaves the floor. Now balance the two sides of your hips. If you're reaching for uh, the calf, your ankle or your big toe, Keep flexing the foot as you straighten your right leg forward to whatever degree you can draw your right shoulder back and down. Just like your hips, balance the scale of your shoulders. Now begin to turn out your right leg, opening it slowly as you counterbalance with the left arm opening slowly. Just the amount that you can maintain a vertical spine. Now how's your breathing? Feel the earth below as you spread your toes and root down, inhale. Exhale, that's three. Inhale, feel the uplift through the center line of your body and crown. Exhale, that's two. One more deep breath, expanding in all directions. And then bring your right leg forward, flex your right foot. Think of lifting your pelvic floor, that engagement of Mula Bandha. Raise your arms for one inhalation, stand tall. And then exhale, let it go. Nice job, everyone. Shake it out, dance it out. And then let's come back to the top of your mat. Feet touching, inhale, raise your arms overhead. Take some sort of standing back bend. Lifting the chest, drawing the tailbone towards the heels. Exhale, hinge forward from your hips. Inhale, lengthen your spine halfway up. And then exhale, step back to downward facing back. Bring your feet together to touch in downward dog. And then walk them forward about five inches closer to your hands, so it's a shorter downward dog. Spread your fingers really wide apart, wrap your triceps towards the earth, and relax your neck, lift the shoulders away from it. Now on an inhale, raise your right leg behind you. As you exhale, tap the outside of your right tricep with your right bent knee, coming forward to stack shoulders over wrists. Inhale, we're doing the same thing, but maybe slower if you can, Raise the right leg, exhale, shift forward, hollow your belly, feel containing your center as you tap even higher outside your right upper arm. Inhale, raise the right leg, you're gonna perhaps add on here. Exhale, tap right knee towards right outer armpit, pause there for a few breaths. Now look in front of your mat and begin to bend your elbows back. Hug your right knee inside out against your right arm and maybe you start to bend the elbows and lean the left ribs onto the left upper arm. Maybe you start to raise the left leg. Maybe you start to raise the right leg straight, flexing the right foot. And then when you're ready, come back to downward facing dog. Lower your knees to the earth. Lower your forehead in child's pose. Three spacious breaths. So the name of that arm balancing pose that we snuck in is Ekapada Kundunyasana. Just playing with it. No attachment to outcome, just playing with it. Last side. So when you're ready, please come back to downward facing dog. Bring your feet to touch. Walk your feet about five more inches closer to your hands than your usual downward dog, so it's a shorter stance. Spread your fingers stably wide and wrap your triceps towards the earth shoulder blades stabilized onto your back ribs. Listen to your breath. Inhale, raise your left leg behind you. 
Exhale, glide forward and tap your left knee to the outside of your left upper arm, stacking your shoulders over your wrists. Inhale, raise the left leg. See if you can go even slower. Exhale, tap a little higher outside your left armpit or aim towards it. Inhale, raise your left leg. Last one, maybe adding on. Tap the outside of your left upper arm. Continue to breathe there. Press against your upper arm, shift forward, bend your elbows back. Maybe lean the right ribs against your right upper arm. Or you might lift the right foot and flex it. You might straighten the left leg and flex the foot. Ekapada Kuninyasana. Coming back to downward dog. Let's lower the knees. Let's lower the forehead. Child's pose. Three deep breaths. So in that process, we just did what came into prevalence. Was it that non-attaching to outcome, that letting go, or is that the effort? Or did you feel a sense of balance between the two? Let's begin to stretch the arms forward and slither onto our bellies, coming into Sphinx pose. So as you place your forearms parallel in front of you, have your elbows just slightly in front of your shoulders. Bring your knees close together. And then cross your left forearm on the floor in front of your chest as you bend your right knee. Back stroke your right arm and open the front of your right shoulder. With your right hand, catch hold of the inside of your right ankle or foot. That's the big toe sign. With your knees no wider apart than your hips distance. Deep breaths. Bring your right heel closer to the outside of your right hip, just slightly outside, while pressing both of your frontal hip bones against the ground. Feel the support of your left forearm in front of you, allowing your chest to lift and face forward, relaxing both of your shoulders down your back. Let's listen in for three more breaths here. Releasing your right leg, plant your two forearms in front, back to Sphinx. Scoot your knees closer together. Then cross your right forearm in front of your chest. Bend your left knee and backstroke your left arm to open the front of your shoulder. Catch hold of the inside of your left ankle or foot, the big toe side. And with your knees no wider apart than your hips distance, reground both of your frontal hip bones. Deep breaths. Bring your left heel slightly towards the outside of your left hip, giving your quadriceps some lengthening. Feel the support of your right forearm, allowing your chest to face forward and lift up. Now take a mental scan of your body and notice if there's any kind of gripping. last breaths. And as you unravel, lower your forehead to the earth to prepare for one round of locust pose, five to ten breaths of your count. To prepare for Shalabhasana or locust, bring your knees close together and when we lift the body, again you want to keep your knees no wider apart than your hips distance to help support your lower back. Also, you want to keep your legs and your feet parallel to each other, pointing your toes back. Now begin with your arms down by your sides, palms face the earth. As you press your pubic bone into the ground, press your heels back more actively so that as you inhale, you can lift your legs as they remain straight off the floor. And then you coil your chest up, looking on the ground ahead drawing your shoulder blades down your back, lengthen the back of your neck. As you lift the arms, they can either stay back or open wide like wings, in which as you rotate the fronts of your shoulders behind you, you can begin to turn your palms slightly to face forward. Or if you're looking for more rigor in the back muscles, you can extend both arms forward as though you're holding a beach ball overhead. Upper arms alongside your ears, 
drawing the shoulders away from your neck. So you're counting your total of five to 10 deep breaths here in Lotus Pose. And when you decide to land, turn your head to one side, pigeon toe your feet. You might wiggle your pelvis left and right and take three deep breaths into your belly. We have one more active back bend on our bellies. Now you can decide your last one here, either the same posture, set it up the same way, locust pose, or move on, turning it up a notch to bow pose, Dhanurasana. So if the latter, I'll set it up with you. Bend your knees, reach back with your hands and catch your outer feet. Again, keep your knees no wider than your hips distance apart. Press your pubic bone towards the ground as you kick your legs back pulling your feet towards you to lift your knees off the ground. Coil your chest up, you're counting five to 10 breaths before you land to rest. Slide your shoulder blades down your back, lengthen the back of your neck, and now scan your body. Are you feeling a balance of effort and ease? When you let go from this posture, turn your head to the opposite side, and that will have been our last back bend. So if you like, massage your lower back by bending your knees and windshield wiping your shins together left and right. A couple more deep breaths into your stomach to help relax your nervous system. Now, as you lower your legs straight back, slide your hands alongside your floating ribs. Press your body up to all fours to prepare for a spinal twist and thread the needle pose. So set up with your knees directly under your hips, but your wrists a couple inches ahead of your shoulders. Now, if you'd also like to stretch your inner thighs in this posture, we're gonna start by raising the left arm, then step your left foot out to the left. So the sole is completely grounded and the arch of your left foot is in line with your right knee. So that part is optional. If you feel like it makes the pose less accessible, then just keep the left knee on the ground. Raise your left arm towards the sky, opening your chest, deep inhale. Exhale, thread your left arm, palm face up, under your right bent elbow, right elbow pointing towards the sky, and lower the left side of your head all the way down. And if it doesn't reach the ground, place something under your head. Let this be as little effort as possible to maintain this posture. Relax into your deep breathing, balancing the height of your two hips and allowing your rib cage to gently rotate. Three more breaths here. Gently press into the ground to rise back to all fours, preparing for your side too. So if you stepped out your left foot, step out your right foot as well. So the sole is flat on the floor and the arch is in line with your left knee. Inhale, raise your right arm, open your chest. Exhale, thread your right arm, palm face up under your left bent elbow, left elbow towards the sky. Lower the right side of your head all the way down, catching it with a prop if needed. Feel the depth of your breath. And as your hips stay balanced, allow your rib cage to gently rotate deeper into the twist. Three more breaths.
as you're ready, slowly press your body back to all fours. And find a seat with your legs out in front of you. Straightening your legs for a forward fold in Paschimottanasana. If you want to use a strap, you can wrap it around the balls of your feet. Hold it with two hands. Flex both of your feet. Separate them hips distance. Pressing the mounds of your big toes forward. Encourage your inner thighs to slightly rotate towards the floor. From down to your sitting bones, lift up to your spine. Remember that idea of restacking from the tailbone up each vertebra. And then relax your shoulders down. If you don't have a strap, raise your arms and catch your two imaginary straps from your ceiling. Pull into them as you get a little taller and relax the shoulders down. With your exhales, begin to hinge forward from your hips, maintaining the fullest length of your spine so that if your back begins to round or your shoulders begin to tense, you ease out of that just a little bit to find the range that allows the most length and relaxation. Now, if you're holding your imaginary straps, let go of them and hold on to your legs or your big toes instead. Let's take five more slower exhalations than inhalations here. You might count to five as you breathe in, count to seven as you breathe out. And as you're ready, use an inhalation to lift your chest and then the rest of your spine. So find a way to sit comfortably and upright to facilitate alternate nostril breathing. Nadi Shodhana. Great for practicing balance. Balancing the left and right hemispheres of the brain and deeply relaxing your nervous system. Rest your left hand on your lap and you might like to bring the thumb and first finger to touch to help focus. With your right hand, stick out your thumb, pinky, and ring finger. And as you close your lips, continue to breathe softly but sustained through your nose. Eventually, you might close your eyes too and direct your inward gaze at your third eye center. Let's begin together. And as you feel the pattern, continue at your own pace whenever you're ready. Exhale this breath, then hold it out. With right thumb, cover right nostril, inhale through left. Hold the breath in. Last two fingers cover left, exhale through right. Hold the breath out. Inhale through right. Hold the breath in. Cover right with thumb. Exhale through left. Hold the breath out. Inhale through left. Hold the breath in, cover left, exhale to right. Hold the breath, inhale to right. Hold it in, cover right, exhale to left.
last two rounds. Finish the round you're on. Relax into your natural breath. Release your hands. Perhaps keep your eyes closed. Maintaining this deeper sense of tuning inward. Begin to lower your body. If you have a wall nearby that you could lift your legs against, slide up against that wall and come into legs of the wall pose. Otherwise, you might lie on your back. Maybe you have a block you can place under your sacrum, the flat part of your lower back, and raise your legs straight up. The other option is to practice shoulder stand or plow pose, as long as you are free from injury and know how to practice it safely. Now, if you are in legs up the wall pose and you feel completely supported, holding the posture is effortless, then feel free to stay there throughout Shavasana. Otherwise, start to lower your body onto the floor so that your pelvis lands on the ground. Then bend your knees, and you could do this part with your legs up the wall as well. Bend your knees, crisscross your right thigh over your left thigh into a supine version of cow face pose. Separate your feet wide apart as your thighs hug your midline. Then reach your hands to catch hold of your outer feet, outer shins, or the backs of your thighs. And as you continue to splay your feet wider apart, Draw your tailbone towards the ground. Shoulders on the ground. Just three more deep breaths. Gently switch the cross of your legs. Catch hold of your outer feet, shins, or backs of your thighs. Splay your feet wider apart and draw your tailbone and shoulders onto the ground. Three deep breaths. Now draw your knees bent towards your chest, uncrossed, and gather them in close to your heart. You might even like to lift your head and shoulders as you embrace yourself in gratitude. Take a deep inhale as you close your eyes, fill up to the top and hold the breath in. Maybe play with sipping in a little more air and squeezing yourself lovingly a little tighter. Then as you're ready, open your mouth with a big sigh and release your arms and legs to rest comfortably in Shavasana.
your body resting here as your breath flows naturally. Begin to wiggle your toes, stretching your feet, circle your ankles. Begin to wiggle your fingers, stretching your hands, circle your wrists. Allow a deeper inhalation as you raise your arms overhead and stretch through both ends of your body up and down. And as your eyes remain closed, continue to tune inward. Begin to draw your knees again into your chest. Slowly roll to your right side, pausing to rest your head. In your physical yoga practice today, notice the type of energy you've cultivated here. As you're ready, press your hands into the ground and slowly lift your torso, then your head. Allowing your body to sit anchored, tall, and comfortably. If this is the end of your practice tonight and you won't be joining meditation, namaste. But if you're staying for meditation, you might choose to keep your eyes closed, perhaps rest your arms on your lap, maybe even bring the thumb and first finger to touch, whatever feels natural for you to remain attentive in your body. Observe your breath flow into a steady natural rhythm. Notice that you, as the observing awareness, control where you choose to place the spotlight for your attention. If sounds or movements occur in your external environment, you can choose to linger your attention onto them or softly acknowledge your attention has gone astray and then return the spotlight onto your inner world here in your meditation. This is a practice of steady effort or abhyasa. For approximately the next 10 minutes, I invite you to commit to giving yourself the opportunity to experience the effects of fully immersing in your meditation practice by letting go of responding to stimuli in your outside world. This is a practice of detachment called vairagya. Now, as you feel your body's stillness, observe any movements of your mind, that is, any thoughts that surface and fade, the natural fluctuations. Now, as you receive and release breath, notice the energetic or emotional quality of each thought that you receive and release in the same way you're practicing with external stimuli. Succinctly acknowledge each thought's quality, such as sad, panic, anticipating, neutral, etc. 
then let go of entangling your attention longer into a storyline that the thought creates. Let's practice this for two minutes. Expand your awareness to your physical body again. Observe the quality of your posture, rigid, relaxed, etc. Is any part of your body reacting to your mental activity by tightening or stiffening? Has any part of your body let go completely, thus losing a feeling of alertness? Scan your body with neutral, non judgmental attention for the next minute. Return your attention onto your natural breath. How did the practice of identifying your thought qualities feel? How much efforting did it take? How much surrender did it take? Just allow space for any answer to arise without directing your thoughts. And what did you notice of your body's reactions to your mental practice? Did your body tend to effort and grip more or to soften and let loose? Did you feel a balance of focus and ease in your body? Allow space again for the answer without directing your thoughts, just listen. We 
tune your body to feel a balance, openness, stability, relaxation, and alignment. Perhaps it requires a little gentle physical shifting. And in that reattuning of your body, observe any effect on your breathing. Let your spotlight return to your mind. Let your awareness sit distantly in the back row of your mind's theater. As you feel the rise and fall of stories by your thought characters, rest in the balanced awareness of your presence. Able to steady your attention and able to let go of being hooked and taken out of your seat in the back row where now you can see the bigger picture calmly. Feel the synergistic dance of focused effort and detachment. This is an ongoing process. Sitting here for one minute of that. As you allow deeper breaths, feel the subtle movement in your body. Feel what your body is physically connecting to right now. Bring your awareness back to the room or space that you're in, even with your eyes closed. Moving your fingers, Join your palms to meet at your heart, lifting your heart as you bow in to close this practice. So in reflection, what areas perhaps of your life can you continue to witness? Any tendencies of over-efforting or completely detaching? Perhaps you already feel states of balance. But if not, how can you use the tools of your body, breath, and awareness to continue to rebalance, feel whole, and see the bigger picture more clearly? Let's close chanting one ohm. Take a deep breath. Uh, the light in me bows to the light in you. Namaste.